Welcome to the Bio 113 Fruit Lab Dissection. Please make sure that you've looked through your textbook chapter and make sure that you've done the lab readings and are familiar with the material before proceeding with this lecture. Now remember our flower has four whorls, the sepal, petal, stamen, and carpal. With our fruit lab we're really going to be focusing in on that carpal layer. And remember with our flower, our flower is essentially modified leaves. And a modified leaf is like this paper. It's very uh, flat. And what a plant does when it modifies the leaf to make the carpal whorl is it takes that leaf with all of the little ovules lined up and it just rolls that leaf up. So essentially this is one single carpal. What I'm going to be doing with our fruit dissection is I'm going to be cutting our fruit in such a way so that we can see when we have just one carpal, one leaf with all of its ovules all rolled up to make our big delicious fruit or when we have multiple carpals that are all rolled up leaves with all the ovules on the inside and they are all fused together essentially making what look like different chambers inside of one great big fruit. So visually I hope that you can keep this in mind today when we are doing our uh, fruit dissection. We are going to start with the simple fruit and the simple fleshy fruit are nice because um, it, a lot of times it's easy to identify how many carpels we have. So I want to start with a berry and the tomato is a classic example of a berry. When we take a look at a tomato, these green structures here are our remaining sepals. Our petals of course have fallen off and we look at our tomato right here is where we have that um, remnant. We have the scar from the stamen and the stigma style of the carpal, all of this is one great big ovary. So here we have our tomato. This is where the stem was attached. When I cut this ovary open, the first thing that I want to notice is I want to notice the different layers of my pericarp. Out here, the skin is the exocarp. This is our mesocarp, and all of this juice on the inside is our endocarp. So with a tomato, with a true berry, most of the time we're going to be eating all three layers of our pericarp. Exo, meso, and endocarp. And we can see all of our seeds on the inside. Now one of the things our eyes need to start to see is we need to see our carpal layers. We need to see those rolled up modified leaves. So this is one carpal, this is two carpal, this is three carpals. I like to see carpals as being these different chambers. So this tomato has three carpals that have fused together to make that larger fruit. Our next fruit that we're going to look at today is a type of berry, and that type of berry is a Hesperidium. Here we have the stem that connects back to the rest of the plant. We would have had our sepals, petals, and stamen, but those are all gone. And so what we've got is this great big enlarged ovary. Now the thing about a Hesperidium is that we have this really tough leathery exocarp. Most of us don't want to eat that directly. Inside we have the spongy mesocarp, this white spongy mesocarp. Most of us don't want to eat. I mean, we'll eat it if we have to because we, we don't want to take the time to peel it off. So some of it does get stuck to these different carpal layers, these different um, segments. Each segment is an individual carpal. Now really, we don't want to eat this thin piece of skin. We would rather just remove it, but most of us are pretty lazy. If we were to remove that endocarp, we would just have these delicious little locules, these juice-filled cells. That's really what we're after when we're eating a Hesperidium. But let's face it, most of us are not gonna take the time to remove that skin surrounding each segment, the endocarp. Our next type of fruit is also a type of berry, and this is a pepo. Again, our stem connecting to the rest of the plant. Our sepals and petal and stamen are all gone, and so what we are left with is one great big ovary. This is an acorn squash.
When we go to eat a pepo, most of the time, we're going to remove this outer thin layer of exocarp. For some pepos, it's really, really tough. Like when you think about watermelons and cantaloupe, we are after all of this delicious mesocarp. And you see all these stringy bits inside? This stringy bit is all endocarp. Now this is a beautiful pepo. And the reason why I love this pepo is because we can easily see those chambers, those different carpal whorls. We have one, two, three, four carpal whorls in easily identified in this pepo. Our next fruit is going to be a droop fruit. And let's face it, droop fruit are challenging. There's a lot of different types of droop fruits and this is one of the droop fruits we like to eat. Here's our stem that connects back to the rest of the plant. Our sepals, petal, Oh, we got some sepals still here. Here's some little sepals still here. Our petals and stamen though are gone. When we cut open our droop fruit, we are going to be able to see those three layers of our ovary. Most of us enjoy eating that outer exocarp. We really want all of this delicious mesocarp and when we take a look at that peach pit, this is hard, chunky endocarp. Now I have tried cracking these things open and it is almost impossible and really dangerous to get at the seed inside. And that's the point of hardening up your endocarp. Now in the way how this is falling apart here almost, we can see one carpal layer and a second carpal layer, this deeper, sort of cavernous um, slice is showing us where those carpals fuse together. Now our other type of droop fruit is of course the pistachio. And the thing with the pistachio is that we don't see or even eat the exo and mesocarp. Those parts of the ovary are gone. So when we get a pistachio in the store, what we have is we have this really tough endocarp when we take a look at it next to the peach pit, we can see how that endocarp has been fused into a really, really solid chunk. So when we crack it open, the part that we're after, the part that we want to eat is this delicious seed. When I split the seed in half, that one didn't work so good. Look at this one. This one's going to split nice and easily. When I split the seed in half, it splits, splits beautifully into two equal smooth halves. This means it is a, I know you said it at home, uticot. Now maybe in your eating of pistachios, you've discovered one like this. It's barely split open. And it's really, really tough to crack this endocarp and get it, the seed inside. Of course, that's the point of a droop. Protect your seed, protect your baby. Don't let nothing get it. Most likely it's gonna go through the digestive system of a big mammal. Now let's get into our really strange fruit. These are plants that are, are doing some unusual things with their ovaries. Let's start with a poem. Here we have an apple. Again, here's our stem. Now keep in mind that this stem is actually blown up to make our apple fruit. So when we eat, eat an apple, we're just eating a continuation of that stem. If we look at the other side of an apple, here is where we see our remaining sepals. Our petals would have been here, and it looks, nope, all our stamen are gone. Sometimes you get some stamen that are there as well. The ovary, the carpal layer, is hidden inside of the stem, and I get it. Hide your ovary. Hide it where nobody can see it. Makes a lot of sense. So when we eat an apple, we are eating mostly pedicel, eating mostly stem. This thin green outline, this is our carpal layer. Here is a carpal, here is a carpal, here is a carpal, here is a carpal. Almost looks like a beautiful flower if we can train our eyes to see that thin layer. 
so this is our exocarp, this is mesocarp, and this smoothness inside is our endocarp. Here we can see our smooth endocarp and our little seed tucked inside. So unless you eat the core, most of what you are eating with an apple, a palm fruit, is you are eating stem. Another weird and funky fruit. And if you saw the lecture slides, you saw how the pineapple grows. Let's take a look here at the base. Here we can see the result, uh, the remaining pedicel. So when we look at this, this is the stem, and then we have a continuation. What the plant does is it does this kind of tightly compact spike inflorescence. Each one of these little chunks is an individual flower, individual carpal, and we can see the remaining sepals. There would be some beautiful purple petals, stamen, and of course, that green, wish it was yellow, um, square is our ovary. When we cut and dissect a pineapple, we like to cut it right down the middle. And the reason why we do this is so that we can easily see that continuing stem, that continuing pedicel, and then out here, if we take a look at our individual ovary, we can see the continuation of that ovary and how this individual flower of our multiple fruit connects onto that main stem. Now I'm sorry, I'm sorry that horticulture and um, culinary worlds have, have called this a berry because it is not a true berry. This is an aggregate fruit. And the reason why it's an aggregate fruit is because we've actually got little akines. So all of these little dots, these are individual dry indehiscent fruit that are not supposed to open up at maturity. So when we eat a strawberry, the part that we are eating is just all receptacle. It's blown up huge and each of these individual little yellow dots will be our true fruit, will be our akeen dry dehiscent fruit. Now I always love to bring unusual fruit to class for dissection and for tasting. And what we have um, was in the store are mangosteens. Now admittedly, I have never had a mangosteen. I, I don't really know what I'm getting into here. I've seen some pictures, I've seen some images. We can see the stem, sepal, and I'll assume there were petals underneath. And when I cut it open, that looks very fleshy. We have a very hard exocarp. I'm not eating that. Mesocarp, and then hopefully you can see this smooth endocarp on the inside. With our mangosteen, the part that we are going to be eating is we are going to be eating these fleshy pieces. These fleshy pieces are actually considered arils. Now, arils are funky and strange because the arils are produced by the seed. So it's not parent tissue. It is a, a structure that is produced by the baby plant as it is developing. And this will be the part that we will be, um, that we will be eating. Hmm, that is a very unusual flavor. The next fruit that I would like to dissect, again, is something that I have never tried before. This is a uh, breadfruit. And the reason why it gets the name breadfruit is because uh, apparently it, it tastes a little bit like bread when you bake it and cook it. It does need to be cooked before you eat it. So here we have the stem connecting this fruit back to the rest of the plant. This is one great big ovary. And sometimes breadfruit can get ginormous like jackfruit and its closely related cousin, the durian. Um, so when I dissect this, I'm going to cut it in half.
we have exocarp, spongy mesocarp, and we can see inside here in all of these little rays is our very, very smooth endocarp, and then our little itty bitty seeds. This is our stem, and it does continue down into our fruit. When I go to eat this in a little while for lunch, I am going to cut out and eat mostly mesocarp and endocarp, and I'm not gonna pick out all of the seeds, so I will eat mesoendocarp and even a bit of the seeds. I'll let you know when we return back to class how this tasted. So when it comes to classifying our breadfruit, at this point, I would be inclined to call it a pepo. We've got a thick, or we've got a, a outer layer that I'm not going to eat. I'm mostly going to eat mezzo and endocarp. So at this point, I'm going to call it a pepo since that's the category it seems to fit in according to our lab. Please email me if you get any questions. I will be uploading a PowerPoint slide that has pictures of many other fruit for you to identify for your lab report. If you wanna to go to Woodman's or Valley and pick up some of these fruit, I did pick up all of these fruit at Woodman's. Um, so you're welcome to do that if you wanna do a dissection at home. If you are doing a dissection at home and get confused or aren't sure what you're looking at, just send me a, a picture and send me your questions. I hope that this works for you. Always, always, always email me if you have any questions. I hope you enjoy your fruit lab.